All right, this is Grade 3, Module 1, Lesson 16. We're going to use the distributive property as a, a strategy to learn some of our multiplication facts, particularly the bigger ones. Um, let me show you what I mean. So suppose we've got 7 times 4, and that's, you know, that's a pretty big um, multiplication fact, particularly the 7, right? And so what we can do is to show our students that there's some tricks to learn how to do 7 times 4 and memorize 7 times 4. And one of those ways is to take the array of 7 times 4, with 7 rows of 4, and break it up into two smaller arrays. So I'm going to cut it up right here, and we're going to see an array up here, this array, and this array down here. And so what we get is this upper array becomes 5 times 4, which is 5 rows of 4, and this bottom array becomes 2 rows of 4. And so we get the upper array, you get 20 dots, and in the lower array you get 8 dots. So all together, you add those together and you get 28 dots. So that tells us that the answer for 7 times 4 is 28, and that's a really cool trick. Um, super powerful strategy using the distributive property. The, and say that again, to take 7 and you break it up into 5 rows and 2 rows. There's our 7. And then 5 rows of 4 is 20, 2 rows of 4 is 8, and then we add them together. So let's put this into practice with one of our homework questions. We're supposed to basically fill in the blanks. So this is a perfect example where 8 times 4 it might be a, a multiplication fact that our students don't know right off the top of their head. So let's break it up using the distributive property into 5 rows of 4 and 3 rows of 4. So this upper array is going to be 5 times 4, which is 20. And for students who, you know, 5 times 4, that technically means 5 groups of 4. But if the students don't want to skip count by 4, we've learned the commutative property. They could skip count by 5s and do it 4 times. So 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, rather than trying to do their skip counting and of fours and do 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. It might be easier for them to use the commutative property and just do 5, 10, 15, 20, and they get the same thing. Now our second array, the bottom array, is three rows of four. So we're going to fill in the three right here, three rows of four, and that's 12. And so way over here, we've got 8 times 4 is 5 times 4, that's this area, plus 3 times 4, that's this array right here. And so that means 20 plus 12, we can see that here, 20 plus 12, and that equals 32, because we can add our 10s first. 20 plus 10 is 30, plus the extra 2 is 32. And our last example for this video is um, we've got an array that shows one strategy for solving 4 times 9. Um, explain the strategy. Now, first thing I'm noticing is they wrote the problem 4 times 9, but then they gave us the array that traditionally would actually be 9 times 4. So I'm going to really talk about 9 times 4 rather than 4 times 9, but it's they're the same. That's the commutative property in action right there. So they took the 9 and they broke it up into two smaller arrays. We've got the upper array is a 5 by 4, 5 times 4, that's this, 5 rows of 4, and that's 20. And then in our second array, this lower array, oops, not 3, it's 4 rows of 4. That's why we have 4 times 4 here, and that's 16. 
And now we can add them together. 20 plus 16 equals 36. So strategies in our own words, well, the students are going to be able to write a lot of different ways, but basically it's going to be some sort of variation on the theme of we're going to take our 9 and break it up into 5 plus 4, and that gives us 5 times 4 plus 4 times 4, and that's 20 plus 16 is 36. And of course we want them to use words to describe that whole process. And that is Grade 3, Module 1, Lesson 16, using the distributive property to learn our multiplication facts.